we go. Hello, and welcome to this month's uh, community office hours for the package team. The goal of these meetings are to kind of have an informal uh, chat with members of the community for any ideas that they would like to contribute to GitLab or uh, any questions they have in terms of how to implement them, uh, as well as just give a general chance to ask any questions that may come up. So this, uh, we try to do these about once a month, and uh, this month we have a few people attending. I guess I should turn it over and say, um, are there any open questions uh, that people may have? I, I see we have Ethan here as a regular contributor. So currently with the Go MVC, uh, I think it's pretty much just waiting for a security review. So Steve, all of his answers or questions have been answered, uh, documentation has been taken care of. So I think it's just waiting for the somebody from the security team to see, or they requested a path traversal tests and I wrote a couple of tests. So waiting for them to say whether or not that's what they want. So that's, I think that's just waiting for them. Nice. I haven't heard anything else. I think Steve mentioned he was going to join this. Let me reach out to him and see if he's available. And um, so a security review, and has it gone to maintainer review yet? Not not quite yet, right? That's... No, I don't think so. Okay, so security and then uh, maintainer review. Yeah, I'm really excited to have that that feature launched. I'm sure you are as well. Yes. <laughs> yeah, um, that's definitely a MVC kind of thing. There's a number of other pieces that would as a go developer would make it much more useful, but yeah, first steps. And then Ethan, you mentioned you were hoping to talk about the implementation of this issue to add the project details for specific packages. Yes, yeah, so Nick was, was working on, and I think pretty much finished the UI to show project details and build details if a package was published via the API or via a CI job, you know, with CI token or CI job token credentials. So, you know, we were testing various ways to identify other links between, you know, links between packages and projects not pushed via CI. And so that's something I'm interested in, something I'm interested in helping with, but there's not really been any consensus on how to do it. Uh, and my feelings are that doing it automatically would be, has a lot of potential problems and a lot of potential messy details. And essentially my suggestion boils down to not having some kind of schema element for here's all of the versions of a package and just handling that kind of conceptual grouping of packages in code as opposed to in the database and then adding a explicit link from a package to a, uh, to a source project and get revision and some details about how I imagine that working, but essentially that's the idea is having it, you know, there's a current way to create a link via pushing from CI, add a separate way to create the link, or, you know, possibly manually, uh, and then automatically group up packages based on version as opposed to explicitly doing that, which I think I remember seeing an issue that's already kind of talking about doing that in, in the UI. So this would be more of a backend type thing. I like, uh, okay, so just so I understand, we have, there's the first step beyond what we've did for, for when it's built using the job token is having some manually way to enter in a project name. Yes. That probably takes us a pretty decent amount of the way too, right? Like if people want to enter that in, it would be 
do you think the on that note we don't really have a way for having a readme for packages either um do you think there's a need for other user generated content to be associated with a, a package i think that could be useful i haven't thought a lot about that so i'm hesitant to say much about it um i think that explicit, I think creating an explicit schematic link between a package and the source project would allow for a lot of things like that. But yeah, I haven't really thought about it. Okay. Nick, you were going back and we, we were talking about this about a bit in the issue. Have, does, does this approach make sense to you to sort of have the, the manual way? And, the, and I, I guess I didn't understand the implementation of how we would do it programmatically beyond the, the manual entry. You mean my suggestion? Yeah. Um, adding a, so the main thing is adding a something like package source, you know, adding a database type. Um, and I haven't looked through this in detail, or you know, read through my whole blog post and the issue here. Um, but mostly just creating that schematic element having a way to create, you know, create that link and then displaying it for now. Um, there's some, you know, there's some things like Go that when the package is created, that link could be automatic because it's implicit in the structure of the language itself. And there's some things like NPM where I think it would be a good idea to automatically create the link based on metadata if there is sufficient metadata. Um, and then there's other questions like if I have already linked one version of a package to a project, if another version of that package is uploaded, should I automatically recreate that link? But I think that's beyond the first steps. So basic implementation, create the database element and create at least an API for manually creating those links and then hook it into the UI that Nick has made. That, that does make sense. Nick, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say that that sounds pretty reasonable, pretty pretty approachable to me. Um, I think creating an API endpoint to, to link these two, uh, and Steve can correct me if I'm wrong here, probably isn't too difficult. Um, and then wiring it up in the UI is, is very straightforward. Um, the current UI that I've built that displays the project link right now is, is basically only um, pipeline projects. So if, if a package is built via a pipeline, it will link to the project that um, uh, where that pipeline lives. So we would potentially have to add either additional logic to display uh, this, this new link or um, some, I, I guess it's possible although extremely unlikely that you could link a package to a different project and have it built via um, a pipeline that belonged to an even like a, a third project. Mm -hmm. So you could possibly want to display two links there, but I suspect that that's very unlikely and probably overkill. So you'd probably just want to prioritize it and display like if there's an explicit link, display that one. Otherwise try and figure out if there's one uh, related to the pipeline. So I was thinking when I was writing this up, I remember thinking if you have, you know, A, B, and C, and A is the package, and B is publishing it via building, and C is where you're publishing it to, then it makes sense to show. So if the user has manually said this package that we've uploaded is linked to this, or the source is this project over here, I think it makes sense to override the pipeline information saying, you know, it comes from this project the, ma the user has said, as opposed to this, the project that the pipeline ran on. But there's still that display of activity that if I'm correct, or Nick, I think the, uh, the CI shows up under that activity and like says, you know, the, this is the history of what's happened. Yeah, it links to the, the commit that generated the pipeline. So that yeah. would potentially go to, to project C in this case instead of project B, um, which I, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's so bad. I, I definitely 
think that you would want to only display one project. Uh, and m in most cases, I think you'd probably want to display the source, you know, so if somebody's actually like gone out of their way to say this project is mm -hmm. the source of this package, I, I feel that that's probably the most important piece of information to display in the header. Um, but maybe maybe we could uh, do some clever things like we, we could in the UI, for example, we could point out that that commit is to a different project, for example, or um, I just thought of something there. Uh, yeah, so we could probably just do something in the UI, uh, like worst case scenario, saying that this doesn't match the uh, the project that's linked above. Mm -hmm. well, we would if if the if in the case that you've linked a project URL and that it was still built via pipeline, I would still think you would want to know that it was built via this pipeline, you'd want to link to that code. You probably, I think to Ethan's point, you'd still want to see that activity, right? But probably. I was thinking of that it would basically just be another piece of package information that if there's a project URL, it would be added to this table and we would still show uh, the activity if it would build the pipeline here. So I was talking about overriding the stuff under the header there. Um, yes, so here. yeah. So if, if a, does, is there a link to the project there? No, it kind of just links. Oh yeah, this is the link. To the yeah, project. Okay. So that's that link there and the branch name was what I was thinking about overriding as opposed and leaving the history, the activity section there. Okay. That could work for me. I would, but because there, there wouldn't be, this would basically, this is the project URL and then yeah, you would want to point to that branch and we wouldn't overwrite this activity, which is actually saying which pipeline triggered it. Yeah. Okay. okay. That makes sense to me. And we were talking about uh, the ver. I was on mute before, but you were talking about the adding versions to pa a package. So right now, I can share my screen again. Actually, um, right now we have. I think this project shows it off. Oops, I gotta move you all over. Right now, all of these packages are treated as treated as different in, in total. Like all these versions will soon, I think, Nick, this change is being worked on now, will collapse all of these versions into one package type. So you'll see, or one package mm -hmm. name. So we'd click on this and then we would probably, we'll see a versions tab. I think it's either, it's here maybe, below activity, Nick? Uh, no, it's um, it's between the, the title and the package information box. Ah, so that here. Yeah, okay. yeah. And so the project name will still be will be inclusive of all versions, I'm assuming, right? There's no problem with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Steve was talking on that issue. Um, Steve was talking about a project entity kind of thing that, or package entity, uh, to describe all, you know, that grouping of all of the versions of a given package name. And so essentially my strategy is leave that grouping as a logical thing, as opposed to actually creating a database element for it. Since the grouping of different packages by version, well, there's a lot of detailed reasons I talk about in there, but essentially I think it's more flexible. I think the loss of flexibility is not worth the advantages gained from having an explicit database element for the kind of umbrella package. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think like the only reason to really uh, consider that is like if it's a vast improvement on performance or, you know, optimizes something from that aspect. Um, but otherwise, if we can keep it separated um, for that flexibility, that totally makes sense. I don't think I fully understand. Could you dumb it down for me? Are we, are we saying that the, the project will be tied to a version and not the parent package? 
So we won't have a database entry for the parent. It will actually be each version will have a database entry. Yes. So like it is right now, each version has a separate package entity. And I'm just saying don't create a separate database element that groups them together. Ah, okay. Let it be handled by the UI or handled by the logic. Does that clear? Does that answer your question? Yeah. So, one thing I'm a little bit unsure of if, about if we're going to do this manual linking and we're going to build some kind of UI to um, uh, to, to link a package to a project is like what kind of permissions are going to be required for the user to be able to do this? So do they have to be a maintainer of both um, uh, like the, the project that you're linking to and the, the project that the package resides in? Um, or do they, do they have to have some other kind of permission models? Like, is there a way to unlink, for example? Um, obviously these are, these are all just general questions. I'm not expecting like an answer from anyone, but it's uh it's probably worth thinking about because I guess it's going to be very easy to like, if you're, if you're given a UI or even API driven method of doing this, then mistakes can be made and all that, all of that kind of stuff. So we need to possibly make these reversible or blockable or um, any other kind of not allowed to do this kind of action. <laughs> I think definitely they should be removable. Um, as far as permissions, I can see an argument for requiring maintainer on both. I can also see arguments for not. Uh, I think some of it comes down to, is this going to have an effect on the source project? Because if the link, you know, if, if we list packages or something like that, then if I was maintaining some package source, I wouldn't want random things showing up that I didn't create. Um, but if there is no impact on the source project, then Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. My first, without thinking about it more and more, my first instinct was developer and above because they're the ones who can publish the packages. So if you can add a package, you should be able to add some metadata about it as well. And then I was thinking, do, would we want to do any kind of validation of the URL, like a confirm that it's not malicious or something, um, or that there, you know, that it's actually goes somewhere. That's a, a valid URL. So you're talking about the package source pointing to an arbitrary URL. Yeah, if someone actually put in something that was malicious, that was like a, a, vi a virus or something like that. Uh, that's that's interesting because I was expecting we would just either put in a GitLab uh, project alias or ID. And not a full URL. So, okay. but that does open up interesting, uh, yeah. interesting possibilities of just putting any old URL in there. Yeah, like if it's on GitHub, then maybe you still want to create a link. Yeah. So to be clear, I was also thinking, like Nick was, that it would exclusively be linking to another GitLab project. But that is an interesting idea. Probably makes sense to start with only GitLab projects. Mm -hmm. Uh, another interesting idea that for maybe this is this is uh, could potentially be seen as a drawback. Um, although I, I'm not entirely sure how uh, much this scenario would come into play. But imagine it, so I've created Nick's package, and um, uh, and and Ethan is using my package in his project, and uh, Steve is using my package in his projects. So there's two packages now. If if Ethan goes and links his version of Nick's package to my project that won't necessarily touch Steve's version of uh, Steve, like of my package in Steve's project. So Steve will have my, my package, but not linked to the project. Whereas Ethan would have my package, but linked to the project. Um, so th that kind of flips things around in the sense that this feature really is only going to be used if the developer of a particular project really cares about where the package is coming from. Is that true for pack for people who are developing packages? They probably care about that information though, and they want it to be accurate. Depends on the person, I would guess. I don't think what I said there is is a blocker or, or, or prevents us from doing any of this. I just think it's a an interesting thought that I didn't 
necessarily consider it right at the beginning when I thought this was a really good idea. It looks like Steve, you're about to say something. Well, I was, I was going to check something first. But <laughs> so in NPM, if I recall correctly, inside of the package JSON file, there's there's an optional field for the registry or sorry, for the repository, the Git repository. Um, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if most package managers have something like that that we could extract when the package is uploaded and then link from there. Uh, and That's just what really, I was talking about as a yeah. potential second stage, you know, automatically scrubbing things out like that. Okay. Yeah. I think I might've jumped in while that was uh, in the middle of the talk. Okay. Yeah. I think that's definitely something to investigate. And you know, like go it's implicit in the package name though. There's some, you know, there's the whole vanity URL thing. So go supports, you know, I can have a package on GitLab and have a custom domain and use the custom domain as the package name and have it set up correctly so that that responds to particular requests that point to GitLab. So it is implicit in the linkage is implicit in Go, but it would require some extra steps, though it can be explicitly verified. Cool. Yeah, I think I think if we, we check out if if Maven, Conan, all the other ones have options for that, um, it'd be worth at least finding out. Yeah, I think Maven does. It's been a long time though. So does that sound like a good idea for me to pursue? I think so, yeah. I like it. And now that uh, Steve's here, Ethan, did you have any questions or anything about the Go proxy MVC? Steve, is there anything I need to be doing? No, I think I'm the one holding it up right now um, <laughs> with uh, just getting for, around to testing. Um, what's that? I think we're waiting for security also. Yeah, security review is in progress. And then like my review is pretty much done. I just want to make sure that, <clears throat> you know, once it gets into maintainer review and whatnot, um, that I've got sort of a set of instructions to add to GitLab somewhere of like, if you're running GDK, here's how you can play with this locally um, and have it work. And uh, it turns out GDK is, is very uh, picky about ports that you can use. So setting it up with port 443, which um, is somewhat needed for doing some of the go work uh, is a little tricky, but uh, I'm getting close. I, I'm going to spend the afternoon on that today. And Do I you see that can't... proxy thing? What's that? Uh, I created a little simple HTTP proxy so that you could run GDK on whatever you want and, you know, create an ex uh, or have a local forwarder that will, so you can run GDK on port 3000 and then have a little proxy that will point to it. Oh, I might have missed that. Um, I'll find that that's in the issue somewhere. I mean, in the MR. Uh, yes. If it's not clear, I'll tag it. Yeah, that would be awesome. And um, I think part of it is also my, I've never really dealt with port forwarding and all of that kind of stuff and setting that up locally. So I might just be having some trouble with that as well. But um, I'll, I'll see if I can figure that out and ask you if uh, I have some questions getting that set up. Cool. Ray, anything else that we should talk uh, about? No, I, I think we have another uh, community member on the call. I mean, sorry, I don't know the name. I, I see uh, SPHERT. Wasn't, wasn't sure if you had any questions or anything particular that you want us to talk about during the call. If not, that's fine. Oops. Oh, so just type the text just here to listen. No, that's that's completely fine. Uh, I mean, the one question that that 
came up to me because we're talking to that contributor about a license. Uh, I mean, how much of the work is, uh, um, I mean, how many of the issues that you typically talk about for office hours are, are they, do you know what percentage of them are like enterprise edition features or like? Yeah, for now, anything, whenever we're talking about the package registry or the dependency proxy, those are premium features, but right. we are working on a change now to move the package registry offering to core. And right. uh, we have an MR open that just kind of simply changes the license files. So anybody who right. has a self-managed EE instance will be able to use it in the core or starter. And then over the next several milestones, we'll actually plan the migration of all the files to, to, to move it properly. So I think right now it's probably the majority of the, the contributions we're seeing are uh, enterprise edition, but I expect that in, the com like in a month or two months that it'll be much less. Right. Okay, cool. Um, I mean, if, if, in case you haven't seen it, I'll try to find it in my handbook. Uh, I mean, people that are contributing to EE, if you need a license, I mean, here's a, like a handbook page link where I mean, you can, I mean, obviously anyone can start out with a free 30 day trial license. And then if you need licenses beyond that, feel free to ping me uh, to help uh, with the license. And I mean, the other thing I, I talk to contributors about is that actually in terms of like submitting an MR, like you don't typically need an enterprise edition. You typically need it when you need to do testing locally and, and so forth. So it shouldn't be a blocker in terms of getting you, getting people started, but I'm just let uh, me or Tim know that if you get stuck with the license issue, um, so you don't have to deal with that. Uh, so I just went, followed that link. Um, the, so the link to create an access request issue that oh yeah that one's internal i mean that's something that i'll deal with so you don't have to worry about that but i just want people to know that you can always like reach out to me um or ping me and then i'll i'll do the internal work for actually getting the license but that um that's that's not a yeah that's it's pretty simple it usually takes me like five minutes to get people a license out via email so Yeah, and I mean the other thing I was thinking, Tim, on the issue for for the office hour today. I mean, if you want to like a quickly remind people about like some of the low hanging fruits, I think that might be. Yeah, yeah, that, that'd be great, um, yeah. especially for folks watching the hackathon. So I'll share my screen briefly. Right. Um, <clears throat> so every month when we have these uh, office hours, we create an issue. Uh, and in the issue, we, we link to some suggested contributions and we have identified as some low hanging fruit as well as some uh, bigger projects as well. So in terms of uh, low hanging fruit, we have, um, oh, don't we have this already? Okay, I'll just skip to this one. So um, enabling support for, for publishing and installing package, NuGet packages using the job token. So this is a good opportunity to get familiar with where the package registry code lives and also some of the authentication code for GitLab. So if you're interested in, in those things, that's a, a good place to start. We have, uh, and we have a few examples of some issues with Jupyter Notebooks. Um, these are more front-end focused issues with you know, issues where images aren't being displayed properly or things like that. Um, and then for the bigger projects we have, you, know, you could always, do what Ethan's doing, which is adding in a new package manager format. Um, there's a few dependency proxy issues here, adding authentication support so the dependency proxy will, will work with private projects. And um, then, you know, a lot, extending the Maven repository to work with the group uh, at the group level. We just talked about identifying that a package is linked to a GitLab project today. Um, and then there's a backstage issue there. Um, but yeah, the, this is a good place to go. Another, um, you could always, of course, reach out to me though and ask for, if, you know, if you're interested in working on more issues and you don't see something here. Stop sharing. Yeah, I was just doing a quick query. It looks like there are 10 
Uh, I mean, a lot of them are obviously from Ethan, uh, MRs that are open from the community for, for, for the package stage, which is, which is great. Yeah, I know it's a, uh, we've been seeing a lot, a lot more community contributions recently, which is awesome for me. And, uh, <laughs> I think it's, can be, um, it's, you know, it's like, we're a great, we're a great team to work with. Come talk to Steve and Nick and I, and we can, you know, help push these merge requests through. Right. Steve, Nick, Ethan, Tim, anything else? Or I guess if not, I guess we can just wrap things up early. But, uh, all right. Well, thanks everyone. We'll uh, obviously we'll figure out a date for for probably like middle of June, and then we'll do this again. Yeah, maybe June tenth or the seventeenth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll create an issue and we'll figure out a date. So. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Everybody. All right. Thanks everybody. Cheers. Bye.